all right, nobody panic. This is a grammar video. Let's just take a breath and get through this. Commas, my and probably your grammatical nemeses. I am forever not putting enough, putting too many, or putting commas in the wrong places. No other punctuation mark causes as much confusion and heartache among writers. I mean, at least other hard to understand punctuation marks like the semicolon have such obscure uses that they can basically be ignored. The comma, on the other hand, has managed to weasel its way into practically every sentence. I mean, my God, some sentences even need more than one. And you can't sit there and tell me that the apostrophe and quotation marks aren't just a rebadged comma. These things are everywhere. Whoever owns the copyright on the comma is making a fortune while hardworking writers like me and you suffer. I, for one, despise the comma. Hold on, I think that sentence needs another comma. Now, the proponents of the comma out there will tell you that they are vital to reader comprehension and properly setting off ideas. Writing, when you boil it right down, is essentially just linking ideas together, and commas, I will begrudgingly admit, are one of the ways to do that. So let's talk about some of the ways to properly use these little grammatical bastards. The consensus seems to be that there are eight separate ways to use a comma. I'm choosing to talk about these eight because it's lower than the like 12 or 14 that some people list off. I'm also going to avoid talking about the straightforward ones like using a comma to set off dialogue and their use in numbers and dates. For those of you who don't know, any dialogue should be separated from the quotation by a comma, whether the tag comes before or after the dialogue. I hate commas, he said, should have a comma right before the dialogue tag and inside the quotation mark. Also, anytime you list a date, like June 4th, 1978, it should have a comma somewhere. Same thing with numbers. Different style guides will tell you that, you know, numbers over a thousand should have a comma separator among them somewhere. So those are the two most straightforward uses of the comma, which I now realize I said I wasn't going to talk about. Anyway, comma use number one, or I guess technically number three, use a comma to separate items in a series. Anytime you list off related items or actions one after another in a series, those items should be separated by a comma. I went to the store to buy cat food, cat litter, cat treats, and cat toys should have a comma between each item in the list, including before the and of the last item. Because the and joins the last item in the list, you need the comma. If the and was joined in a separate idea, then you wouldn't need a comma in that situation except for the Oxford comma, which we are not going to talk about. Next up, use a comma to set off non-restrictive clauses. What's a non-restrictive clause, you ask? Basically, it's a clause or an idea, clause just means idea, that can be removed from a sentence without impacting the meaning. Duncan, who woke his owner up at 4.30 this morning, is sitting in the chair. The non-restrictive clause there is about Duncan's ambivalence towards his owner's sleep patterns. It can be removed from the sentence without really affecting the meaning of the sentence. You lose information, but the main thrust of the sentence is still there. If you couldn't remove the clause from the sentence, then it becomes a restrictive clause and doesn't need to be set off with a comma. And also, as an aside, Duncan is the name of a cat. I know some of you seem to think that's my name, but no, that's the, the name of the cat. This linking of non-restrictive clauses is related to setting off independent clauses. Independent clauses are ideas in a sentence usually preceded by a coordinating conjunction. There are seven of these coordinating conjunctions, and, but, for, so, yet, or, and, nor. That second and was a con junction to link the last thing in the list, and isn't in there twice. Duncan was fed, but he kept begging for food. That needs a comma, because those are two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction. His owner explained this to him, yet Duncan kept meowing. Also needs a comma. How many more of these do we have to go through? 
Unfortunately, quite a few. Hey, that happens to be the next one. Next up, use a comma after an introductory word or phrase that begins a sentence. These are the however, consequently, unfortunately, or on the other hands of the world. Each of these should be followed by a comma. This includes simple things like on June 4th, 1978, something happened, or on Saturday, Duncan's owner tried to sleep in unsuccessfully. Both of those are sort of a preceding idea that comes at the start of the sentence and need to be capped off by a comma before getting to the main part of the sentence. Next up is a fancy sounding one. Use a comma to set off an appositive. I assume that's how that's pronounced. What's an appositive, you ask? Well, besides being a blood type and a weird way to describe a really high academic grade, an appositive is a phrase that renames a nearby noun. Duncan, the black and white cat refused to pose for the video thumbnail, has an appositive in it. The black and white cat renames a nearby noun, Duncan, and needs to be separated by commas. If we were to just say the black and white cat refused to pose for the video thumbnail, that's not an A-positive because it doesn't rename a noun. We're just referring to Duncan using a different noun or noun phrase, I think that's called. If you've ever been scolded for anything, you'll be familiar with the next use, setting off a direct address. I think, Duncan, you should let me sleep in on the weekends. The Duncan in that sentence is a direct address and it needs to be separated by commas. Anytime you sort of break in the sentence to directly address someone or something, you need to separate the direct address with a comma. Now, dear viewer, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. Who am I kidding? You didn't enjoy this. It was about grammar and syntax. If you want to see more stuff like this that's not about boring grammar stuff, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.